This is going to be the next episode of God's Game of Thrones, and we've made it to King Nadab. And a brief description of King Nadab is he is Israel's second king, who reigns two years after his father Jeroboam. So we see Jeroboam showing up once again. And Nadab begins to reign in the second year of Asa, king of Judah. And Nadab's name means willing. The thing about Nadab is he was murdered in a conspiracy to cut off the line of Jeroboam. And conspiracies are no new thing under the sun. That's why many conspiracy theories you see today are actually right. But his spiritual state was evil. And Jeroboam's dynasty ends with Nadab who is mentioned in 1 Kings 14.20 and 5, uh, 1 Kings 15.25 through 31. Now, while we talk about King Nadab, I want to talk about the topic of the tragedy of a lost soul. Because the story of King Nadab shows us just that, the tragedy of a lost soul. Because, number one, he is the son of a wicked father. If you, if you look at 1 Kings 15, 25, it says, And Nadab, the son of Jeroboam, began to reign over Israel in the second year of Asa, king of Judah, and reigned over Israel two years. And he did evil in the sight of the Lord, and walked in the way of his father, and in his sin wherewith he made Israel to sin. So far, King Jeroboam has shown up in every study on these kings. His evil influence is stamped on this whole thing. Unfortunately, his son Nadab walked in the way of his father. It says he did evil in the sight of the Lord. It says he walked in the way of his father, and in his sin wherewith he made Israel to sin. With such a big influence as being a king... They made the rest of Israel to sin as well. And the Bible talks about this, how your sin affects other people. But the tragedy of most lost souls is that they are the son of a wicked father. If you've read statistics which aren't foolproof, it shows us that a child is more likely to get saved and go to church if their dad gets saved and goes to church. And this is even more so than it is if the mother is saved and goes to church. A huge responsibility is placed on the father. It is the father who is supposed to be the spiritual leader in the home. He is supposed to keep his wife safe from deception. He must make sure the kids aren't being deceived as well because the devil and devils love to come after the weaker vessel. And the Bible plainly tells us in Proverbs 22, 6, to train up a child in the way he should go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. I wonder if Jeroboam was doing that. In Proverbs thirteen twenty four, it says, He that spareth his rod hateth his son, but he that loveth him chasteneth him betimes. Fathers have a huge responsibility. Children are responsible for obeying their parents in the Lord. Ephesians 6, 1, Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. That in the Lord there is significant. Because you shouldn't obey your parents when they tell you to do something sinful. Which happens whether you know it or not. But in Acts 5.29 it says, Then Peter and the other apostles answered and said, We ought to obey God rather than men. You follow your leadership, your parents, your husband, your supervisor. As far as that goes. If they tell you to do something against God or the Bible, then you obey God rather than men. But other than that, you follow the leadership that's placed in your life. And Nadab would have grown up in a home where his father would have been influencing him to sin. Jeroboam would have woken Nadab up bright and early to worship the golden calves because Jeroboam made his own religion. Nadab would have seen his father's adultery, his lying, his killing, his stealing and his outright rebellion against God and the prophets. But there are dads today who cuss the preacher in front of their son. 
and they they badmouth the preacher who's preaching the God of the Bible. Nadab could have seen instances where Jeroboam rebelled against the words of the Lord as soon as it came out of the mouth of the prophets. I believe there are fathers in hell right now who know they paved a clean path for their son to follow them right into the flames of hell. And my father never told me about the Bible. He never asked me if I was saved. He never took me to a church. He never influenced me the right way, but he did offer me alcohol. He would talk about his sex life, his adultery against my mother. He would play rock music and have me drive him to the liquor store and come out with a brown paper bag full. And when kids have a father like this, they usually go towards the broad way to hell. The influence of my grandparents put me in the other direction. Unfortunately, today, the grandparents aren't like the grandparents of my time. My grandparents are like in their late 70s right now. Now my grandparents' grandkids are about to have grandkids. And each generation gets worse. The godly grandmothers are getting less and less. We lost the godly fathers. We have just about lost the godly mothers, and the godly grandmothers are all dying off. And Nadab was the son of a wicked father, and I doubt his mother prayed for him, at least not to the God of the Bible. This is the tragedy of a lost soul, a son of ungodly parents. That's what he was. He was a son of ungodly parents, and the next thing, he was smote by wicked hands. In 1 Kings fifteen twenty seven through 28, it says, And Basha, the son of Ahijah, of the house of Ishakar, conspired against him, and Basha smote him at Gibbethon, which belonged to the Philistines, for Nadab and all Israel laid siege at Gibbethon. Even in the third year of Asa, king of Judah, did Basha slay him and reigned in his stead. Now you have a man named Basha, who is the son of Ahijah. And Ahijah is the prophet that ripped Jeroboam's garment. And prophesied things to him. And prophesied about how his, his child was going to die. And Basha, like Ahijah, was fearless when it came to Jeroboam. So being fearless against Jeroboam runs in Basha's blood. Basha ends up killing Nadab, the son of Jeroboam. He's assassinated. I'm not sure how. Maybe he was dressed up like the Assassin's Creed guy and snuck in privily and smote him. I'm not how I'm not sure how he done it, but he killed him. Basha smote Nadab. Nadab was smote by wicked hands, meaning he killed him by beating beating him with his hands or weapons. Nadab was wicked and he was killed by a wicked man. The tragedy of a lost soul was many times the wicked people around them helped bring them to an early grave. And I know several people they can't get on track because once they get off drugs, the people around them push them back on drugs. They can't stop drinking because they still hang out with drunks. They can't get off pills because their boyfriend does pills. And many people are in gangs and end up getting killed because of another gang. If you hang around extremely wicked people or get involved in things that you shouldn't be involved in, then there is a good chance you will be smote by wicked hands. And it's rare for a righteous man to be killed by another righteous man. How often do you hear of Christian-on-Christian -Christian violence? And I'm sure it happens because Christians can be mean, but as a general rule, you don't hear that. They may get verbally violent, but it's not like out there in the wicked world. The tragedy of a lost soul is shown in the story of Nadab. He was the son of a wicked father. He was smote by wicked hands. He was involved in wicked things like his father, and it ended up leading to his death. The tragedy of a lost soul also has to do with a story that is forgotten. In 1 Kings fifteen thirty one, it says, Now the rest of the acts of Nadab and all that he did, are they not written in the books of the book of the Chronicles of the kings of Israel? The thing is that God chose to leave out the account of Nadab in the chronicles of the kings of Israel. He didn't get his story mentioned over there. So there are things that maybe Nadab did right, but since he did so much wicked, they were left out. There are wicked men who go through life living wicked, and when they die, they lived all that time for the flesh and left nothing behind. Their story is forgotten. 
And this is true for everybody, in a sense, but especially for the average, lost, wicked sinner. In Proverbs 10, 7, The memory of the just is blessed, but the name of the wicked shall rot. And you have your exceptions like serial killers and things like that. You have your exceptions like Hitler. They made their mark on this world like Jeroboam as being extremely wicked, shockingly evil and vile like Ted Bundy. But the average lost soul goes through this life and winds up in hell. There are young kids who are the sons of a wicked father or an absent father and they join gangs and are smote by wicked hands at an early age, and their story is forgotten. Nobody remembers them. Nobody talks about them. They didn't do enough good to be remembered, and they didn't do enough bad to be remembered. They just existed for a moment and then have been dead even longer than they lived. Worst of all, they wake up in hell. This is the tragedy of a lost soul. Nadab was the son of an idol-worshipping father. He was smote by wicked hands, and his story was forgotten in many ways. And his reign, the next thing is his reign was short-lived. In 1 Kings fifteen twenty-five, it says, And Nadab, the son of Jeroboam, began to reign over Israel in the second year of Asa, king of Judah, and reigned over Israel two years. Nadab's reign was cut short. It was only two years. And his father reigned so long that we have had to talk about him in the story of every king up to this point. Many times the father has led the kid into so much sin that the kid doesn't even last as long as his father does. Many times the son carries a heavy load that his father has left on him. Some people hate a, a child just because they hate their parents. Nadab's reign was short-lived. He didn't even get much time to make a turnaround. Some men's life is short-lived. They reign as king on the throne of their heart, but not for long. In Psalm fifty-five twenty-three, But thou, O God, shalt bring them down into the pit of destruction. Bloody and deceitful men shall not live out half their days, but I will trust in thee. My father died in his forties. He lived a life of fulfilling the desires of the flesh. I recently got his Bible that he used when he was alive. I, I don't believe he used it much, but I see the notes in his notepad. He had things about the rapture and the restoration of Israel wrote down. He used a King James Thompson Chain Reference Bible. His Bible reflects the conflict that was going on in his life because he had notes written down, and you can tell he knew some things about the Bible, but at the same time, the Bible smells like cigarette smoke to this day. I can't even look at it very long because it gets all in my nose and makes you sneeze and cough and there are parts of pages missing where it looks like he used the paper to make a joint with it or something he might have been saved but he had chosen for the most part to walk in the flesh all of his days as a saved person if he was saved and i never knew, knew he even had a bible or knew anything about the Bible until after he died. His life was short-lived. He died only in his 40s, barely half the days he could have lived. That is the tragedy of a lost soul or the tragedy of a Christian who lives for the flesh. You take an early exit. Ecclesiastes seven seventeen. Be not overmuch wicked, neither be thou foolish. Why shouldest thou die before thy time?